Back on Newsmaker Saturday, in case you didn't notice, spring training baseball is on hold in Arizona. The league and the players are embroiled in a labor dispute. They've got a lot of issues on the table that are far too numerous to get into tonight. But needless to say, it is causing a huge economic impact, not only on the state of Arizona, but individual cities. Take Mesa, for instance, home to the Chicago Cubs and the, and the uh, uh, athletics, Oakland Athletics. Joining me now is the mayor of uh, Mesa, John Giles. He's been mayor since 2014. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for, jo for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. Thanks, John. Good to be with you. Okay, give me the long and short of it. Um, it seems that we're getting to a drop-dead period here where we might not get spring training at all. Have you come to terms with that reality? Well, no, I, I'm, I'm still in denial. I, we, we certainly hope that, that that is not what happened, particularly after you know the last two years of, uh, you know, through no fault of anyone's because of the pandemic not not getting spring training uh, for us to to uh, miss out on another season of spring training for man-made reasons would really be disappointing well so, yeah uh, in, in 2019 I think you set boy I'm trying to look back I think you set a bunch of records in 2019 right before the uh, the COVID explosion yeah where you set attendance records for all of spring training yeah, and, and, and we'll, we'll continue to do that. You know, the, the, uh, the Sloan Park uh, holds, I think, you know, the top three or four records for, for largest uh, spring training audiences ever. Uh, and we'll just, we'll just continue to, to do that. And, and the A's Stadium at the Hopo Cam is, is, uh, is right at, at the top of the list as well. So uh, getting people in, in, in the seats uh, is not a problem. It's just uh, getting past pandemics and getting past labor disputes. This was more than a half a billion dollar economic impact, 640 million on the state of Arizona for spring training. Do you have any idea what it means to you specifically in Mesa? Have you broken those numbers down? Uh, we haven't, but I mean, the, the, the Cubs are the, the big draw in the Cactus League, as, as you know, and uh, the A's do very well as well. So of that, you know, 600 million, uh, we are... Uh, you know, nearly, I mean, we're, we're not at, not half, but we're a big chunk of it. Wow. You think you might be approaching half? That would be something. Well, yeah, I mean, between the, the, the Cubs and the A's, uh, those, are, those are two of the more popular teams. You know, the Dodgers and, and the, uh, the, the, of course, the Diamondbacks uh, are, yeah. are big draws as well. But uh, the Cubs still are the, the hottest ticket in, in the Cactus League. There are a lot of nonprofits that benefit as well from spring training. Can you, can you tick off a few of those for us? Sure. Uh, the, the, we're very fortunate in Mesa. We've got a great volunteer organization called the Hoho Cams, and they provide all of the, the, the logistic and volunteer support for both stadiums. They park the cars. They help with, with concessions. Uh, and and they, uh, are, they every year pass out hundreds of thousands of dollars to charitable organizations in, in the city of Mesa, primarily focused on youth sports, but they also, uh, you know, they, they don't say no a lot to a lot of really good causes in, in our city. So, uh, there's absolutely a, a, a direct impact to our nonprofit and our and our charitable organizations in Mesa, and, and that's uh, that's not even beginning to count uh, the impact on our hospitality industry, the hotels and the the restaurants and, right. and everyone, uh, the, the, the the thousands and thousands of people that are impacted uh, in that industry as well. By the way, on that point, I got to tell you, I am still seeing a lot of out of towners here. It's as if they made their reservations to be here for spring training. And even though they're not going to games, my sense is, you know, <laughs> we're packed. I mean, the, the resorts are packed. They're charging a lot of money. I'm wondering if, if they've just moved on to do other things during this period of spring training that they didn't change their plans and were pretty friendly about the COVID restrictions around here. Do you think that yeah. maybe it won't be economically as bad as everybody says? Well, th this is still Arizona, right? With, with or without baseball. Right. I, I was talking to some folks visiting from uh, Wisconsin today at a, they came out for a ribbon cut for a groundbreaking of a, of a big project in downtown Mesa. They were loving it. They were, they're ready to take, and I mean, this is chilly weather for us, right? But they were, they're ready to take their shirts off and go play Frisbee <laughs> on the lawn. Uh, so Arizona is still Arizona. And so, you, yes, our, our hotels and our restaurants are still going to be relatively full, but it's not the same as when spring training is in effect. That, that, it's like a month-long Super Bowl, you know, when, when spring training is going on. Yeah, okay, so give me, give me the lay of the land with Major League Baseball right now and the players. Yeah. Is there well, a drop-dead uh, drop date where you say, 
there's going to be no spring training this year. There is, but I, I don't I don't want to think about what that might be. Uh, right now, uh, they are still actively negotiating. The, the games were supposed to start this weekend. That's not going to happen. The, the, ga the games have been pushed back at least until March. Uh, but we, you know, hope, hope springs eternal in, in, in spring training, right? Every, every team thinks they're going to the World Series, and, and, and that optimism uh, isn't dead yet. So we're, we are hoping that, the, that they'll reach a bargain soon. Uh, I can tell you that the, the stadiums, the ones in Mason throughout the Valley, they're ready to go right now. So as soon as a, a deal is struck, we can be playing baseball within a few days. Are you getting any feeling, and I'm, I'm tying this back to preseason football, I think in the NFL a lot of the players, the veterans, could do without it. They don't really care about mm -hmm. it. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if there's an analogy with baseball. Obviously, pitchers have to get throws in. They've got to be ready to go. But yeah. I wonder if some of the veterans are kind of like, you know what, if we miss spring training, it's not, it's not going to break my heart. I mean, is, is any of that undercurrent going on? The players on the teams love spring training. I, I can tell you uh, both the A's and, and, the, and the Cubs uh, shed uh, sincere tears when, when they leave here and go back to places that are not nearly as, uh, as warm and comfortable and as fun as spring training. So, uh, no, I, I don't think there's indifference on the part of the players or, or management. I, I think spring training is appreciated. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I mean, th these, guys, that, these guys could show up in the next day play a game like, like you say that the pitchers are going to be behind i'm not a, a baseball expert but but yeah it takes a while for the pitchers to catch up with the batters and so that's why you see so many home runs in spring training these oh are, interesting these are these yeah. are fun games okay one more thing about this um how much is baseball major league baseball keeping you in the loop about what's going on because since it's an economic driver for everybody here how much are you being told about what's going on behind the scenes and how close they may or may not be? Yeah, I, I wish I could tell you that we felt like we were being included and updated and, and valued in this process. We're not. Uh, we're, we're one of the casualties uh, of this. And, and that's, uh, that's disappointing because cities like Mesa have invested many millions of dollars uh, and, uh, and, and we're getting the short end of the stick here. So, so I'm doing my best to, to elevate uh, our concerns and our interests and to, to let Major League Baseball know that, that, uh, that we've done a lot for them and, and we deserve to be uh, considered in the equation of, uh, you know, uh, let, let's hurry and get back to playing baseball. If, if we just need to end the lockout. They can continue their negotiations. They can, but, but we need a, a working, uh, functional solution uh, so that our communities like Mesa can uh, try to recover some of the investment that we've made in Major League Baseball. Like a lot of people, they feel like they've lost, you know, two and a half years. You lost the 2020 season completely because of COVID, spring training. Right. And then last right. year it was limited capacity. How did that work out? Well, uh, uh, not just baseball, but you, you see Major League Sports, they, they figured out how to responsibly uh put on uh, these types of major events, you know, uh, with COVID protocols. So we're not, uh, and we're, we're totally okay. We're, we're not, we don't want to dictate to Major League Baseball how many people they want in the stands or, you know, how to, to safely, uh, uh, you know, c considering public health uh, concerns uh, function, uh, you know, the pandemic is not over and we, we all understand and agree with that. So we are absolutely uh, deferred to MLB for how the games are put on. Uh, if there's if there's uh, restrictions, we're not going to argue with that. Okay. We just want something. We want we want them back in the ballparks. Mr. Mayor, before I let you go, I've got to ask you about something that came across my radar that I just was very curious about. I want I want your take on it. During the 89th Conference of Mayors back in September, you were one of 16 mayors that voted in favor of a, re a resolution calling for critical race theory to be caught, taught in public schools K through 12. Kate Gallego actually made the resolution. That vote did not surprise me. Your vote for that did surprise me. Can you explain why you voted for this? Sure, I, I think critical, uh, if you ask 100 people or 10 people what critical race theory means and you'll get wildly different answers. Uh, the, the idea that you can just uh, say that we're not gonna talk about race and with, when we're teaching history is just uh, nonsensical to me. But I, mean, I don't and, know and that that's what we're talking about here, because in this resolution, it's stated that race is not a biological reality. However, non-white shortcomings are the fault of white people. 
That is pretty unambiguous in my book. Well, no, I think the, the problem with, again, critical race theory is that nobody really agrees on what, the, what we're talking about. Uh, and so that's my beef with it. I, I, I cert, I certainly, we don't want to, to teach in the classroom that one race is, is, is good and another race is bad. That's crazy. But I think but that's it, exactly it, it, what people are worried about. Sure, sure it is. And I, and I would they, suspect in Mesa, it's probably an overwhelming majority who feel that way. Well, uh, me included. Uh, but again, that's not what we're talking about. That's not what everyone has a different understanding of what critical race theory means. OK, what is and, your understanding of it? it, it what you voted for? <laughs> well, it, 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 there's not a good definition of critical race theory. So my position is that we need to let local school boards, we need to let uh, education professionals dictate what the curriculum is uh, with, with, of course, uh, parental input in, in, in school board meetings. The curriculum uh, needs to be set by by a combination of parents and educators, but uh, the idea that you can uh, criminalize, in some cases, teachers teaching history uh, and, and including race as a real issue in history, that's crazy. So let me understand, you're saying you wanna make sure that there's a frank discussion about all the racial issues in our history currently. Um, you don't want that to be off the table, but this idea that basically if you're born white, you're hopelessly racist, and that if you're born of color, you are hopelessly a victim. You do take exception with that. Absolutely, I, I do believe that, that race is a part of our history and to suggest that a teacher ought to be, uh, commits a, a, a criminal offense if they discuss racial issues in their classroom, that's, that's, not, a good, that's not a good education model. One more thing and I'll drop it, <laughs> I promise. Okay. Um, why even take this up as a group of mayors? I didn't know that mayors had any influence really on what's being taught in schools. That's up to school boards and yeah. the education department, the state business. Why did you guys have a vote on this with the mayor's conference? Well, again, I, I didn't introduce the, the, the topic and, and the, the situation you described is certainly the case in Mesa. We, we have a separately elected school board and, and I, I am out of my lane when I'm uh, talking about education in Mesa, Arizona. That's not the case. And there are other mayors that do have responsibility for running their education system. And so that's why uh, those mayors uh, are, are so outspoken on the topic. Do you stand by that vote? I mean, do you wish you had abstained or said, you know what, I'll vote for the other resolutions as part of this whole package, but not that one? No, I don't. I, I, again, I, the, the, the idea, the, 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 the legislation that's currently being discussed at the state legislature and around the country uh, that wants to, to criminalize uh, any discussion of race in the classroom, I think that's that's unwise. OK, we'll leave it there. Mayor John Giles, I appreciate your time and uh, hope we get spring training back on track. That would be nice. Amen. From your lips to God's ears. John. <laughs> Good to see you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. We're back in a minute on Newsmaker Saturday. Thanks again, as always, for joining us for Newsmaker Saturday. And if you want to see a past episode of Newsmaker Saturday and pass it on to someone else, something you found interesting, you can obviously use your uh, camera app and just go to the QR code and that'll take you right there or do it the old fashioned way. Go to fox10phoenix.com slash newsmaker. You can find everything there. Thanks again and we will see you next week on Newsmaker Saturday.